radio stations, maintaining conditions for peace amidst farmer grazier conflicts in Berry and Jerem divisions of the Adamawa. A radio documentary by CLTV's Ellis Wajibanmia. Just have a look at this area. The cows have destroyed everything. The cassava I planted here is all damaged. Look at this other side. Nothing can grow here again. It is the same scenario every year. The cows keep uprooting and destroying our crops. Times are very difficult. How can we survive? The farmers know that this is the road means for cows going on transhumans. Yet, they cultivate in such areas and are the first to complain that our cows destroy their crops. Who la destruction is what is on shot. Quand ils sont déjà préparés du champ, ils grimpent sur le bois pour voir si l'homme du champ est là. When the herders approach farmland, they climb on a tree to spy whether the owner is around or not. When you are not around, they send their animals to your farm. I was hiding the other day, and I observed this. Out of anger, I came out and engaged in a fight with the herders. One of my legs got broken during the fight. One day a group of angry farmers who claimed my cattle destroyed their crops stormed my house. Everything was bent down. They saw a man on a bike and thought I was the one. Unfortunately, the man was killed by the angry farmers. We are in Bakau, a village settlement in the Jerem Division, Adamawa region of Cameroon. As we walk around the village, normalcy surrounds the atmosphere as everyone is about their daily activities. At first sight, there are no signs of any issue that could ruffle the air and tear these groups of people apart. However, as we engage in discussions with some of the villagers, it felt like exhuming years of pent-up anger and discontent from the people's hearts. Indeed, tension between farmers and herders in Bakao village is a reality. I have been into farming for several years, but cows make the practice of the activity difficult. These animals constantly destroy our farms. I was to harvest cassava tubers this August, but herds got into my farm and ruined everything. In March, my neighbor could no longer take this. He used the cutlass to wound some of the animals. The following day, he was arrested. Farmers have no right to wound our animals. Taking care of their cattle costs a fortune, and rather than fencing their farmlands, they prefer to administer fatal wounds to our animals. It's not normal. The case of Mbakao is similar to experiences across several villages in the Adamawa region of Cameroon. Violent clashes between cattle herders and farmers often lead to disastrous consequences. Several hectares of farmland have been destroyed. Cattle have been killed and at times resulted in people sustaining deadly injuries. To measure the impacts of such a conflict, we travel to another village called Tongo to speak with the village head Abdurrahman Iya. In January 2023, several farmlands in Tongo village were damaged by livestock. This created tension within the community. All the farmers gathered, panic gripped the entire village 
as they were fears the situation could degenerate. Fortunately, the header consent accepted to pay for the damage caused by his animals. The, the different victim to say the portrait on go de la hierarchy. A few kilometers from Tongo village, we stumble on Umaru, a header who confirms that several years ago, some angry farmers stormed his neighborhood to end his life. He says two people who were mistaken for him were killed on that night, and his life was only spared by a farmer who showed him mercy. Someone told me an angry group of farmers was coming towards my house because my cattle destroyed their crops. I rapidly hid in a nearby bush. I watched these people setting my house ablaze. In the process, two people were killed because the farmers mistook them for me. As part of the group left the vicinity, a few others stayed back searching around. That was how they caught me. Fortunately, one of the farmers told the others there was no need to kill me. That was how I was saved on that day. The forces of law and order later got involved and the rest of the farmers were arrested. The conflict between farmers and cattle breeders over land ownership and use has been a continuous concern in parts of the Adamawa region of Cameroon for centuries. The region is cited as among the highest producers of cattle in the country. This comes with a price, as breeders find it difficult to control their animals that encroach on farmland. Farmers here often compete with grazers for the same fertile lands that have abundant pastures for grazing. The situation is worrisome because as farmers like Tonya Jonas are fixing the soil and planting crops, cattle are pasturing and feeding on their crops. Just have a look at this area. The cows have destroyed everything. The cassava I planted here is all damaged. Look at this other side. Nothing can grow here again. It is the same scenario every year. The cows keep uprooting and destroying our crops. Times are very difficult. How can we survive? Villages like Garuga Libona, Maidugu, and Sabongari in the Mbere Division, as well as Ngat, Libong, Balumti in the Jerem Division of the Adamawa have witnessed several deaths as a result of such conflicts. In Tibati, cattle breeders have constituted themselves in an association to seek solutions to the age-long problem but through the voice of their Secretary General, Muhammadu Salisu, farmers are often at fault. The farmers know that this is the road means for cows going on transhumans. Yet, they cultivate in such areas and are the first to complain that our cows destroy their crops. Experts' opinion affirm that the frequent conflicts between farmers and herders are rooted in the scarcity of land as everyone struggles to get the best areas for the practice of either farming or cattle breeding. Dr. Yaji Paul, a lecturer of culture and sociological trends at the University of Ngaoundiri, confirms the conflict is as old as humanity. So the last decade, there was a problem of organization spatial. For decades now, there have been stiff contests over land use due to demographic growth and a shortage in available resources. This has led to several conflicts between farmers and herders across the Adamawa region of Cameroon. 
Generally, when cattle destroy the crops of farmers, these farmers attack herders, destroying properties. These herders, in turn, retaliate and the conflict accentuates. It has become a crop cultivation versus grazing issue. Portions of land are a strategic asset in the Adamawa region of Cameroon, and the quest to control fertile parts is often a battle, contrary to other regions in the country. The main socio-economic activity in the Adamawa is livestock breeding. With the pressure of population growth and the need to diversify economic activities, crop cultivation is on the increase. Land ownership between the farmers and the grazers is more complicated. His Majesty Deswa Saliu, village head of Sabongari, recounts how the conflict almost tore his community apart. This conflict has a lot of ampleur in our arrondissement. Why? The conflict has gained intensity in our subdivision because each time the farmer complains of his farm being destroyed, the grazer always seems to win the case. We all know a farm cannot move. The animals always move to the farms, and so it's easier to control these animals. The lack of concrete solutions has created frustrations, anger, and conflicts. The situation is critical and must be tackled. Racked by violent farmer herder conflicts, authorities in the Adamawa region began deriving strategies to promote peace among the belligerents. Land demarcations have been established for farmers and herders. This is the case in the Jerem, as the mayor of Tibati, Daeru Amadu, explains. The Cameroon government is doing everything to solve this problem because farmers and herders are all needed for the development of the country. In Tibati, since 2013, there are well-defined zones for agriculture and others for livestock breeding. However, this strategy seems not to be working as farmers always complain of invasion from herders and their animals. Osman Joseph, president of the Farmers Association in Gumbela, another village in the Adamawa, confirms. Nous avons eu à marcher pour voir où sont campés les éleveurs et où sont normalement la portion des de, de, de cultivateurs. Several years ago, a commission made up of different authorities came to Ngunbela and we had natural demarcations for farming and grazing. This was done to quell the already rising tensions between farmers and herders. However, most cattle breeders still prefer to keep their animals in areas meant for farming. Herders like Ismail DB say the strategy is not working because of the bad fate of farmers who often cultivate on the roots of animals. Farmers always believe they are more important when it comes to dealing with land issues. They claim our animals meet them on their lands. This is not true. They cultivate on areas means for pastoralism because they feel it is more fertile. When they plant crops where animals are used to crossing in search for pasture, who then should be blamed? Farmers spend time crying foul for nothing. In the face of such disrespect of demarcated land, some farmers like Saleh Lorang in Gumbela village say he often tables a complaint to the village head. These two seems not to work completely, as farmers sometimes accuse village heads of being in support of those they term rich cattle breeders, who according to them have the necessary means to bribe their way through any court case. I abandoned agriculture two years ago. 
I got tired of laboring each year just for my crops to be destroyed by cattle. The more I complained, the more the cows damaged my crops. The livestock breeders are more powerful than I am. So I abandoned farming and now I am involved in other activities at home. My farming business was doing well. I used to cultivate cassava, maize, groundnut, and potatoes. I used to secure my area, but cows started devastating my crops. I complained severally to no avail. Right now, I have given up. I do other petty business to survive in the village. The divisional officer of Menganga, Mebenga Yayawu frequently handles such files, refutes any allegation of bribe. I cannot agree with such allegations. All I know is that herders and farmers play a vital role in Meganga. The conflict between both is a complex issue. What we do to solve complaints is to apply what the law says. If after investigations the headers are all false, we are obliged to compensate the farmer for the destruction of his crops by animals. Conscious of the interconnection between the activities, farmers and grazers in the Adamawa region are proposing ideas that could end the age-old conflict. The only solution to this conflict is that people should respect the land demarcations established by different authorities. Everything is clearly outlined. We just need to obey. Traditional and administrative authorities always organize sensitization campaigns to convince farmers and herders to live in harmony. Communication, according to these officials, is key to resolving the conflict. In this light, community radio stations play a vital role in reducing and preventing farmer grazier conflicts. There are currently about 11 community radio stations in the region with tailored programs to educate farmers and livestock breeders. The oldest of all is Tikiri Radio Station in the Mbere Division, one of the epicenters of the conflict. La radio Tikiri FM a vu le jour suite à un protocole d'accord. Tikiri Radio was created after a partnership agreement between the Cameroon government and UNESCO in 2004. The radio was established to mainly broadcast content that unite the people of the Mbere and accompany them towards the development of the division. Vers le processus du développement du département. The chief of station Toko Robert says special programs address the issue of living together run daily on Tikiri FM. The Baya, Fufulde and French languages are used to send the message across. Tout était axé sur la cohabitation pacifique et le vivre. Everything is about peaceful coexistence. During our morning programs, we tell farmers and herders that they are inextricably linked. For example, we tell them that the farmer needs the herder because the meat produced by the herder is very important. We also tell the herders that they need the farmers because the cassava cultivated is among the main dishes of these herders. Administrative authorities are also joining in the radio sensitization campaigns. Qu'il faut segmenter les lieux. Naturellement, nous pensons que c'est des canaux que nous avons utilisés par le passé. Naturally, as divisional officer of Meganga, I'm frequently on the radio to preach peace to the entire population, not only farmers or headers. I use the radio to tell them that they are all Cameroonians 
who need each other to grow. Another community registration that was created a few years ago and that has been making strides in promoting peaceful coexistence is Panyere FM in Tibati. When we get into the radio station, a live program is on air. Cattle have to live in peace with farmers. Cattle men have to call their animals to order in order for peace to reign in Tibati and in Dangeren. Created in 2016, Panyere Community Radio Station went operational in 2018 with the principal objective of promoting peaceful coexistence among different ethnic groups in the Jerem Division. Amadou Aijo is the director of the program's department. La radio Panyere FM Panyere Radio Station has as its credo the promotion of harmonious living together. In Tibati, we have a heterogeneous population. At one point, we have several herdsmen from the Central African Republic who came here with their cattle. It became crucial for us to preach peace to avoid conflicts with farmers based here. The peculiarity with Panyere FM is that apart from having officials from the delegation of agriculture and livestock intervene as experts during programs, they equally create airtime for farmers and herders to discuss issues and propose solutions. Nous avions mis en place au niveau de la radio Panyere FM des émissions at Panyere Radio we have several radio programs to tackle agropastoral conflicts during our programs we notice that official from the delegation of agriculture and livestock only discuss very technical issues concerning the sector for this reason we decided to start inviting farmers and grazers each group Pose the problem and the solution still came from them. We think it is a more effective way to foster peace and prevent further conflicts in the future. Les plaintes de de l'éleveur, l'agriculteur puisse nous sortir la solution. My name is Kong Mirabel. I happen to be one of the top ten that were chosen to be trained for this radio. I've been here since the beginning. We have had a lot of cases where farmers complain that their farms have been destroyed by either goats or cows mm -hmm. yeah so some of them even threaten to, to to take legal decisions concerning that i used to advise some of them to come to the radio so they can pass out a general information a general message so that the owners of these cows to call their animals to order in tibati farmers and grazers confirm panyere community radio station has been doing a lot in sensitizing them to live peacefully however some say much is still to be done for the message to effectively go through. We often get a lot of sensitization over the radio. I particularly appreciate what the radio is doing to help reduce this conflict. But I wish the message yield more concrete results on the ground. Panyere radio station covers 80% of the Jerem division while 20% is covered by the Banyu Community Radio Station, based in the Banyu Division of the Adamawa. Banyu FM equally covers parts of the Faro and Deyo Division. The Chief of Station, Barbe Kombele Eric, emphasizes that their daily mission is to preach peace in a variety of local languages. Farmers and cattle breeders are called to live in harmony in two specific manners. We, first of all, do the sensitization through our generalized programs. These are morning or evening talk shows with a phone-in slot where people call and express issues and solutions. This is very effective. 
We also have special programs like deal directly with the issue of farmer and grazer conflict. For example, we have a program called AgriShow, which helps us to tackle all issues linked to agriculture. We equally have one called Livestock Breeding in Mayo Banyo. Within these programs, we bring experts who tell farmers and grazers how they must behave towards each other for peace, terrain at all times. We promote living together. Community registrations in the Adamawa represents a considerable opportunity for the reduction of conflicts between farmers and herders. These radios are generally a primary source of information for people, especially as the broadcast is done in local languages. Radio Ngawi, Radio Nyambaka, and Radio Dang are embedded in communities across the region, with the sole objective of preaching peace and improving the well-being of the local populations. They provide a platform where communities engage, debate and articulate local issues. Dairu Amadou is the mayor of Tibati. La communication c'est nécessaire, c'est nécessaire aujourd'hui nous avons Communication is a key element in solving this conflict. Various radio stations are trying to prevent this conflict. Without communication we are doomed. The message of peace is being preached and things are gradually changing. Quand vous n'avez pas l'information, vous êtes perdu. Donc c'est l'information en train de passer et ça change beaucoup de choses. As efforts abound to reduce tensions between farmers and grazers each day in the Adamawa region, many recommend that the Cameroon government should complement community radio efforts. Community radio stations maintaining conditions for peace amidst farmer grazier conflicts in Bere and Jerem divisions of the Adamawa. That was a radio documentary by CRTV's Elise Wajibanya.